Hey guys, welcome back to my channel for a long overdue full valley tour. I have over 2000 hours in the game and my valley is fully decorated. So those of you who have not already seen my valley on stream, you'll finally get to see the whole thing in one video. In the land of plenty we don't know what the word no means. Give it to me, give me all the things I want. Make it new and shiny and make them watch me, make them watch me Turn the power on and wait for life All the pleasures that you paid for, all the skip turns that you saved for All the nights you fell asleep without your gun A coronation, a beheading This is my plaza. This is one of like the first biomes I decorated like an early game and I kind of wanted to do like a botanical gardens theme. So I use this design like kind of like year round. Like I, I this is pretty much like this throughout the year. But then when we hit like different seasons, like in the fall, I'll kind of like swap out some of the flowers and add some more like pumpkins and things like that. I also like redecorating for Christmas. And what I basically do is I just like swap certain things out so that it has the same layout and I don't have to like rebuild the plaza, but I can just change some of the colors of the flowers and some of the trees and some of the small decorations to kind of like change the theme of the plaza without having to completely repave it or completely, you know, swap out the buildings or, or do any like major changes to the build. But back to the year round design of the plaza. This is my Scrooge shop, and this is a Touch of Magic rug that I made specifically for Scrooge, which is actually 50 layers. Most of the layers were used with small shapes, like little black circles and squares that I used to kind of cut and paste and cover up pieces of other motifs to create this design. Continuing on down the rest of the way of the plaza, we have our friendship fountain here, which is one of my favorite items in the game. I'm kind of sad we can only get one. As far as I'm aware, like this, this came from a quest. I think we actually got it from Donald Duck early game. And I love how it looks in the middle of the plaza, like right behind the benches where you can kind of like chill, relax, sit by the water, sit by the fire and enjoy the ambiance, the ambiance of the fountain. Over here, we have our burger stand where you can get fast food. I placed, like I told you, I love decorating with food. So I placed lots of food on the tables. We got some cheeseburgers, we got French fries, we got root beer, there's like a fried fish basket. So we got like pizza and like a boba drink as well. And then we have a cozy little reading nook over here with some like Yule log and some coffee. And then we got Elsa chilling over here by Remy's restaurant. Moving right along to the meadow. First up, we have my house, which I love having right here in the meadow. First of all, because the view, like when I first come out of my house, this is what I see. Like I can see Minnie's house, pink is my favorite color. And I have like a really good view of the Ferris wheel right down the path. So I really, really like this view from the meadow. And I also like having Goofy stall and Kristoff stall right here conveniently by my house. 
This is another area of my valley that I redecorate seasonally. I know it's not technically like spring or summer yet, but I was kind of over the Christmas decorations. I had them up for so long and I was actually just kind of over winter in general. So I went ahead and just pushed forward, deleted all the Christmas trees and stuff from this area. Um, prior to that, I actually had it decorated for fall. I had the pumpkin decorations and Anna's picnic set, which was like much more fall centric. And then around Christmas time, I just put like some Christmas trees and some touch of magic furniture here with Christmas designs on it. But since those holidays are over, I was ready to do just something kind of like more bright and summery with flowers. And I also replaced the Anna's picnic set with this summer picnic set. Over here we have Mickey and Minnie right next to each other. This is what I call kind of like Mickey and Minnie's district of the meadow. I kind of like their little area because I like having them next to each other and I kind of like the contrast between their two houses. They have a nice little like relaxation and picnic area over here where they can have cookouts. You got the grilled food on the table, got a little hot tub and like a tea set. And then of course Minnie is kind of more my style. She needs like a bigger yard with like more fancy lights and like a fountain and her own personal pool, of course. I just love the way all this pink stuff really goes together so well over by Minnie's house. Especially the way it glows at night. That's probably my favorite part of this area in the meadow is the way Minnie's house and the way the lights by the pool glow at night. Up next, we have the farmer's market side of the meadow, which is where you just cross over the main path in the meadow where you have like the farmer's market district. So you have the actual farm, which is like Goofy's farm and the mushroom house. This farm actually used to be much bigger. It was really just Goofy's house on the side and he had like a huge farm with big crop plots planted. But I ended up um, downsizing his farm so I can make room for the mushroom house. So now that we have Eternity Isle, I'm thinking about maybe moving the mushroom house. The jury's still out on that one. I got to see how I feel about it and if I want to move it. But for now, I think it looks really good, especially with those yellow lights hanging down. Like just the ambiance of those lights is like so beautiful in the meadow, especially now that they updated the mushroom house. Like for those of you guys who don't know, when we first got the mushroom house, the grass was just always like this lime green color, like to match the meadow. And if you place the mushroom house anywhere else, it just looked silly because the grass didn't match. But they finally updated it so that when you place the mushroom house, the, the bottom of the house will actually blend in with the ground where you place it. So like if you put it in a snow biome, the bottom of the mushroom house becomes like snow. If you put it in the forest, then it has like a darker green grass around it. So they did a really good job making sure that the mushroom house would blend a little bit better with the, uh, the environment that you're placing it in. So once you get past this farm area of the meadow, you kind of come over to the actual like farmhouse where I have the rest of my crops. And again, I have kind of a quick drop storage box over here. Once you come out of the farm area, you have your apple orchard out here where you can kind of like sit and pick apples and hang out in the yard. You also have another orchard over here with some lemons and I like to place these kind of like barrels and lemons on the ground. Anytime I place a little like orchard area where you can like collect fruit or something, I like to either place like a wheelbarrow or some fruits or vegetables like scattered around to kind of make it look more natural and like it's been, you know, there's like there's been some activity going on over here. This is one of my favorite parts in the whole meadow. Um, I love, love, love. I do. I wish that we could actually use these stalls, like either for storage or like we could like buy stuff from the stalls. I think that would be super cool. Um, but since we can't, I just like using it as decoration. I love this, like the color and the detail that we are able to create with the market items that we have. I think it really makes like an elaborate looking farmer's market where you can come and get fresh fruits, fresh vegetables. I really want to use this egg basket as decoration. <laughs> And I felt like it looked kind of weird having a basket of eggs sitting out in the hot sun. So I went ahead and put Olaf's cloud above the fruits and vegetables so that it would look like it was keeping the eggs and the fresh produce nice and cold and delicious. 
Next up, we have the beach, which, as I said before, has an awesome view of the Ferris wheel. This is designed to be more of a upscale resort style beach. It's probably one of the most laborious biomes that I've done out of the entire valley, apart from maybe my chocolate river in the glade. Like the, the glade definitely took, I think, probably more farming uh, of resources and everything. But the amount of touch of magic rugs that I had to do to create this entire boardwalk in the beach was definitely also a lot of work. In addition to the brick fencing, which, as you know, uses a lot of brick and uses a ton of iron. Um, but it's totally worth it because the build that I had before, um, I have pictures on my Instagram for those of you who want to see the before and after. It was more of a casual, like, sandy beach before with not a lot of upscale development to it. So it was just more of a, like, a simple, kind of, like, casual island beach life, which was really cool, but it just wasn't giving me the vibe that I was going for. I, I kind of wanted to, like, have a lot more color, more life, more of, like, a, um, almost like a beach party, like, nightlife kind of vibe going on in my beach. Uh, so I just redid basically the whole thing like I redid the pathing I added a bunch of fencing to kind of give it more of like a resort style feel like you're walking down the boardwalk on your way to the beach house And then you've got like I said, you know some attractions here where you can get on the ferris wheel You've got these little like beach signs over here by the entrance You've got a vip area here, which is one of the earliest things that I did I created here in the beach even back when it was the casual build I still had this VIP area. I love that this is kind of like an adults only section where you can come back, like kick back, listen to some chill music. You've got your like spa robes and your, of course, your like coconut drinks and everything. So I do really love that VIP spot. And then this thing used to just be a really small beach bar. Like again, I said, I have before and after pictures on my Instagram. It was just a really small, like maybe a couple of small white it was actually those dirty counters, the one that you get from Scrooge that have like the kind of sandy, like dirty look on the bottom of the white counters. And they were just basically sitting in the sand. Like it wasn't paved or anything. It was maybe just a couple counters, couple of stools. And I upgraded that to have this wooden boardwalk underneath. I expanded the counter so it would have more space. I, I swapped it out for like this bigger blue one, added more stools, put some like upscale like seafood tray. I love these seafood trays, by the way, like in real life. I actually love these seafood trays, like oysters, shrimp, lobster, the whole nine. Um, this was another piece that was like no easy task to craft. Any those of you who have craft crafted the Prince Eric furniture sets, like they just they use so I think it's iron. It uses like so many resources, and I don't really get why. Maybe because that's like buckles and stuff on it, but it seems kind of unnecessary for them to be robbing us blind for all those resources. But it was worth it for this build because I really feel like, especially having it right next to Eric's castle, I love having this furniture here, and it just really matches with like the ottoman and of course the uh, the dream fizz like definitely adds a nice pop of color to this little area and then you got like eric's ship over here so it's kind of like the perfect backdrop to your little resort style beach you got your kind of like reading casual snacks going on over here and then this is kind of more like the local market that's like next to the resort uh focused area of the beach you've got some little like trinkets and souvenirs that you can buy seashells jewelry and then of course like a small market stall where you can get your fresh produce and everything. And then, of course, you have a cooking station. By the way, you guys, I have to have a crafting station and a cooking station in every biome. Like, I know that you can always just fast travel, run home, and do it. But for me, I'm all about immersion when it comes to video games, especially, like, life sims and decorating games like this. I don't like to break immersion constantly. I like to feel like I'm almost, like, a part of that world. And so when I'm enjoying hanging out on the beach, I love to just be able to, like, pop over here. It kind of feels like you're actually, like, cooking here at the beach. Like, you come over to the cooking station, you prepare a meal, and then let's say we make this, like, Arendellian pickled herring. You're done cooking it, and then, like, boom, you have this, like, awesome view of, like, actual seafood in the background of the dish that you just prepared. So I love, like I said in the beginning, I love decorating with food. And because of that, I also really like... Um, placing food and cooking stations next to each other in different areas of the valley where you can conveniently come over and either cook meals for energy or you can cook them to do your like dream light duties and tasks and stuff without having to run home. I absolutely love this fountain um, or I absolutely love this statue. For those of you guys that don't have it, it's from the Centennial Star Path, which was I believe like sometime over last summer. I have had people ask where I got this from. So it's, it's like seems to be like a really popular item. And I just love the way the like metallic silver glows in the sunlight i just think it looks so cool like in broad daylight as well as like especially this time this time in the evening like basically around dusk is my favorite time to do tours it's my favorite time to look at all the different like sparkling lights and shining elements of a build that you've done over here we have eric's castle as we conveniently pass by eric <laughs> on the way to his humble abode tucked away back here in like the beach jungle 
I definitely also like having this convenient little exit right here. I've seen a lot of really beautiful builds with like elaborate courtyards and like the gem and opal road and big stone pathing and like pillars and grand fountains and everything. And those kinds of builds are actually normally my style. Like you'll see some of my other castles in the forest and those are much more elaborate builds, uh, which I think is really fitting for a castle. But for this one, since I was brand new to the game at the time and didn't really know a lot about decorating and building, um, I've played other games with decorating, but I haven't done, uh, I hadn't at the time known a lot about the decorating in this game and I didn't kind of know where to start. So this was a really good kind of like first build for me. Um, to just like tuck Eric's castles away in the jungle and be able to kind of put some like natural shrubbery and greenery and trees around it. I also think his castle just fits really well on the beach. I like having him right next to Ariel's castle, which is over here. Look at the way, look at the way the palm tree has like a silhouette in the sun. Dazzle Beach is probably one of my favorite biomes. It's just so beautiful. Like I wanna, I wanna go on vacation here in real life. Like it's just so cool. From here, from here we can actually see a little bit of Ariel's beach club. And we're going to pop on over there and take a look at that. Um, so we've got lots of glowing palm trees here. That was like one of my most coveted items in the game. It took me so long to get it from Scrooge. And when I finally did, I feel like I put it like everywhere. I have it here in the beach, but I also have it, if you remember, over by Minnie's house as well. And I think I've, I've got some like over in Eternity Isle as well. So like I just I really do love the glow and the colors on these trees. So we've got like a little ice cream stand over here. We unfortunately don't have like a lot of like alcohol that we can, we don't really have any alcohol that we can decorate with in the game. Like, so I usually end up using like the slushy dishes to like kind of make it look like a martini glass or something, or I'll use, you know, the picnic baskets technically do have like some small bottles in them that look like they might be wine. But other than that, you kind of just have to use like Dream Fizz or something. Um, but we'll just, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll pretend that this is basically like a cocktail lounge. Like it's Ariel's, Ariel's Beach Bar where you can come hang out, listen to like some, some house music. I wish that we could actually play music on these. Last but not least, we have our more natural part of the beach, which is where Maui and Moana reside. More where like the locals like to hang out. You know, they like to hang out and you've got um, Maui's like shrine over here, kind of where, you know, he likes to worship himself. So it kind of makes sense to have a Maui shrine right outside of his house. And then of course, Moana's pool over by her house. This is another upgrade that I did right around the same time that I upgraded my sandy beach to a more resort style beach. Next up, we have the Forest of Valor, which I just had to tour in the evening. So hopefully you guys can still see all the details, but we are gonna take a nice stroll through here so you can see how much space and how much of the item limit I used on my forest. Like <laughs> this is, I think the second area I finished in my forest, which is the first skin that we got in the game. I got the castle right away and for a long time it was actually my default skin on my house. That was before they allowed us to start placing multiple skins as buildings. I'm really glad that they gave us the ability to do that because I feel like it would be really hard to fill out your entire valley and especially now Eternity Isle if we couldn't use the skins as decorations. So back here we actually have some waterfalls kind of as the backdrop to the castle a convenient crafting station over here a little like lounge area with some tea and then I also put like a little zen sand garden over here um right next to the castle which ironically you can actually still get to this node even with that in the way can you believe that like i wasn't gonna put this here because i thought that it was gonna be in the way and then once i realized that you could still mine this node with this garden here i was like oh it's definitely happening especially because it has purple on it so it really matches with the bushes and the trees that i put behind here i just think i think it's the perfect kind of a uh, vibe right next to the castle i love the way that like the bamboo plant shoots up from there you just get like a really nice garden view when you're like entering and exiting the castle. As you leave the castle, you have this convenient little entrance to the well over here. And then we also have the main exit over here where you can just take the main path over to across the bridge and then over to Merlin's house. So Merlin's house, not gonna lie, is kind of a mess. Like that's the way I wanted it. I wanted him to have 50 million books outside so he could look kind of like, you know, a kooky wizard, which is exactly what he looks like and acts like in the game. Um, I scattered some gems everywhere, potions, of course, like little like books. So it looks like he has some study areas. And then here's his kind of like outdoor lounge 
reading nook and study area where he's got like his globe and of course more books and then this is actually an area where i did one of my dream snaps challenges the dreamers unite challenge which is i think my highest rank to date i got rank 25 on that dream snaps entry and it's featured in my dream snaps video so for those of you who are looking for tips on how to improve your ranking in dream snaps i can help you with that just go check out my video and i will link it in the description below Back here, we have the one of the newer skins that we've gotten more recently, which is like the glowing, I think it's called the Winter Palace. And it's got like fireworks on it when you go and you click on it in the back, which I think is like super cool. It looks the best when it's like really dark at night, like pitch black. But I'm just going to do it in this lighting so you guys can kind of see. But yeah, I actually kind of wish they lasted longer, though. Like that's the only thing is I wish the, can you still see it in furniture mode? I really hope so. Yeah, you can. That's so freaking cool. Exiting the Winter Castle area, we have Elsa's cave, which we did not really have a lot of options for decorating our cave because it's stationary, like we can't move it. So just did the best I could to kind of get a nice kind of like elegant garden area outside her castle that had a few elements of frozen with like some little frosty castles. And of course the frozen fountain here, you still have your, your very cozy, uh, warm forest glow. And then as you walk over this way, you kind of have um, some nice like cool pinks and blues as you enter Elsa's cave and honestly her her house is probably one of my least favorite um, You know in in the game as far as like decorating goes So I didn't want to take up too much space trying to accommodate this build I just thought I'd do something a little small in the front give her a little garden with some crystals a few flowers like purple bushes And she's good to go like we don't need to take up a ton of space on like a building that you can't even move and you can't really customize you can only customize it but so much so um, you know, now you get over here, this is the, the stuff that I really like about the forest, which is the more natural looking, like picnic areas with the dream light fruit tree. And then as you exit this area, you have Goofy Stall, which is conveniently located over here right by the bridge. Next, we get over to my favorite build in the forest, which is the Beauty and the Beast Castle. So we have their kind of like romantic dining area over here, and then the grand entrance to their castle, which is, I believe this is my biggest build in my whole valley. It takes up so much space. Um, and it's one of the reasons I don't really have a lot of room. Like for when we get villagers, I'm definitely gonna have to add them to Eternity Isle because I don't have any more room I, to place them in the valley. But I like the view probably from over here the best. I think walking up this way is my favorite part of the view. And I love having this rug, this Touch of Magic rug as a centerpiece. The only thing I don't like is that it's like right smack in the middle. So if I'm ever doing any like dream snaps, like facing this direction, I always have to delete this rug. I think the colors on the border match really well with the castle because you kind of have like the golden glowing candles in the back. You've got like this really nice pink border to match the glowing roses and the roof of the castle. I definitely get like a really grand royal feel when entering this way with the with the big candles and the pillars, of course, like the big purple and gold pillars, which I really love. I also kind of like having the cozy gazebo over here with like the glowing lights and the little candle and picnic area underneath there. This is the wine bottles that I was talking about earlier. Like I wish we had more of these kinds of wine bottles that we could actually just like place around in different areas of the game, like on tables and stuff like that. But I know that the game is supposed to be kind of like family friendly. So maybe that's why there's not a lot of like alcohol that we can decorate with, but more adults play this game than kids. So, you know, they'll come around. Like there's wine, there's wine in, the, in Ratatouille. Like I know you guys know which scene I'm talking about where he basically gets drunk. So I kind of feel like we should be allowed to have wine. We should be able to place it wherever we want. Over here, we have Beast's Greenhouse, where I try to do a better job of collecting his flowers every day, but sometimes I forget. But it is a good idea to do that, just be, especially if you use them for crafting. And then once again, I actually have a large storage chest over here by his greenhouse because there's so many different kinds of flowers. And whenever I do collect these, I drop these off over here. And then once they reach stacks of 50, I move them over to my other storage areas. Moving on from the forest, we have the frozen biome, which is 
my year round Christmas market. I just refuse to get rid of this Christmas market. Like it's just not gonna happen. There's a couple of reasons why I don't wanna remove it. One is that it's inspired by the European Christmas markets that I visited in like Germany and Switzerland and stuff. They have just such a warm, cozy vibe at those Christmas markets. Like they're definitely something, if you ever get a chance to go visit those, like you definitely should. They have lots of delicious food. Like of course there's like blue wine. It's basically like, it's kind of like a warm, cozy version of like sangria. It's mulled wine, basically, if you like blue wine. And so um, they have that there at the Christmas markets. And this was kind of what I was going for when I did this whole theme. I've got my cocoa stand here, which of course, instead of putting hot cocoa, I actually put some little mints over here. I use the candy cane trees to decorate over here. And then of course we have to have Olaf's snow cloud right over here by the little toy shop. It's got like, we don't have a lot of toys in the game to decorate with, but I feel like you can kind of get creative. You can use like the small miniature boat, like Eric's ship, you can put books, you know, I feel like books is a good gift for Christmas. You've got a couple stuffed animals, like the little snow plushie and the little like one-eyed monster toy. You've got a little boat. This is, I believe this boat is again from the Centennial Star Path. And then you have like a snow globe. The simple lamp makes a really good toy as well. And then just to kind of like fill it out in the background, I put this little like frozen themed um, china shelf in the back. When you go, like I was mentioning the Christmas market in Germany, they have shelves back there where you can buy like ceramic and porcelain, like kitchen decorations and stuff like that. So I thought that that would be a really good, good nod to the European Christmas markets, which I absolutely love. So moving right along, you have some more like holiday snacks over here, some hot cocoa. You've got more of the Christmas trees. And then of course you have to have Christmas music out at the Christmas markets and all the celebratory festivals that we have. So we've got a little piano here so that you can like listen to your music while you're doing your shopping. And then this is actually from the Disney Park Star Path, but I wanted to put it in my Christmas market so it could kind of look like you were buying different gifts and stuff for people around the holidays. And then you can do the same here with like the Goofy Stall, get some like fresh produce from the market. This is kind of like the town square area of the Christmas market, which is something I think I might also leave up year round. I do really like the way this haunted mansion looks in the Christmas market. I think that it just adds so much glow and so much of that like festive look to everything. Next up, we have the other half of my Frosted Heights, which is not so Christmassy and is more just like a year round, uh, almost kind of like Nordic style, like hot cocoa area with a lot of frozen themed furniture. And once again, my favorite, which is a nod to the European Christmas markets. So here we have a set of furniture that I made using Touch of Magic, which is inspired by the seating areas that they have at those winter markets. I really loved how cozy the seating areas were. They all had like furs thrown over a lot of the seating areas, like little cozy blankets and stuff, but we didn't really have any furniture in the game that I could use to place those blankets. So I used Touch of Magic to put shapes on the chairs and kind of like put different like winter imprints on them, like snowflakes. And there's like some gold embroidery over here from like a pumpkin that I put on this blanket. Um, and I just kind of used the shapes and turned them sideways and put different little like Mickey shapes and stuff on them to kind of make it look like you had throws like hanging over the back of the couch cushions. And this is kind of one of my favorite little areas like around winter time to get, but I'm gonna keep it up year round just because I kind of like the vibe. But we have that here next to our hot cocoa stand, which is the reason why I have entirely too much hot cocoa like all over my valley. If you add up all my drinks together, it's definitely taking up a nice chunk of my 6,000 item limit because I've got like not just the hot cocoa, but like coffee, tea, and then of course, like I mentioned the mints and stuff on the counters. So um, it's totally worth it though. And then coming over this way, we have like another courtyard area, which has more relaxing seating over by the clock tower. We've got a relaxing frozen fountain here. And then further down this way, we have our frozen spa area with two different hot tubs. You know, you have to have some nice relaxing candlelight. You've got your spa robes over here. And of course, a nice relaxing seating area with some tea 
and some more spa robes over here in this area. Across the street from the spa, we have some more seating for some nice cozy tea. And then this is actually like a little frozen themed dining area that I made. This is kind of like Elsa's dining area for outdoor seating. Next up, we have the Glade of Trust, which was by far one of the hardest biomes I had to decorate. There are 38 Touch of Magic rugs in this entire biome between this whole boardwalk and Vanellope's Raceway and the Chocolate River that I have over, the, over on the other side. This was the last biome that I ever finished. Like, I just had no idea what I wanted to do with this biome, and it's so big. And it's just, it's kind of oddly shaped too, with like the river running all the way through it and then the kind of like odd ponds here and there. But once I knew I wanted to do like a boardwalk on the bayou type theme, it was kind of just about piecing it together like little by little after that. So I think the first thing I ever built in this whole entire biome was this little like mini version of Tiana's restaurant over here that I wanted to do. And these are all the same Touch of Magic wooden styled rugs that are making up the whole boardwalk. But then there's one unique rug that's right here because it has a, a like a small rug shaped motif on it. So that way it looks like a little tiny carpet like in front of the hostess stand. So I made a look like I'm using all the same style for the rest of the boardwalk, but then I'm using like one different unique design. I'm using up a whole Touch of Magic design slot just for this one piece of wood so we can have this little like unique motif on this uh, hostess stand right here. And then I think after that, I probably did, I might have, I think I did Vanellope's house. Like I knew I wanted to put Vanellope's house in the glade. She's got like some really cool glows going on. I recently changed out the pink flowers for these glowing flowers from the Eternity Isle expansion because I just think those really, really match the vibe of her house for sure. And as I said before, I always love to have a cooking station and a crafting station in each biome. So Vanellope has her own little workshop right here by her house where you can craft things, you can cook. The cooking makes sense for her because, you know, they always use like little candy and like um, chocolate and stuff like that to like to build the car. So this is her little workshop where you can kind of like cook baked goods and smoothies and popsicles. And she's got a little wagon where she puts her ingredients and stuff. A lot of people felt like the multiplayer portal was an eyesore. And I mean, I kind of agree depending on where you place it. Um, but I felt like with all the rainbow colors and the lights, this would be the best place for it to blend in. There's probably, there may, might be like a couple more spots in my valley that have a lot of like rainbow colors and stuff that I could place it. But otherwise, I think it just would have looked really weird. So you come over here by the restaurant and I really love this, um, this little shrimp shop. This was actually my boyfriend's idea. For those of you who've joined my streams, you know my boyfriend Bloodstream, who's always in there hanging out. And it was his idea to put a shrimp sign outside of the restaurant, which I totally love because they have this glistening gold you know, design on them, which I don't know if you can really see it like in this lighting. I kind of wish we could get, oh, there you go. You can see it a little bit. Yep, there you go. You can see the, the, the little flicker. You see it? Oh my God, look at it. It's so awesome. Love it. I love passing by this sign just because of the golden glow. So cool. Moving right along, we have our little candy house, which I think looks super cute, tucked away in this corner of the glade, right by the pond. You've got plenty of pink flowers. You've got cherry blossom trees and then like an actual cherry tree that you can harvest. I recently replaced the brown wooden benches with these gingerbread chairs because the gingerbread chairs, in my opinion, go perfectly with the candy house. And inside the candy house, I actually have my bakery. I'll do another video with more tours of like my indoor builds, but for right now, I just kind of wanted to show this. I think it goes really well with the candy house build. And like I said a million times already, pink is my favorite color. So I really, really enjoy this build. Super cozy. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to have to update it with I think some of the newer recipes from Eternity Isle because we have like way more baked goods now. Next up, we have my absolute pride and joy of the Glade and maybe of my entire valley, which is the Chocolate River. This is inspired by my good friend, Mr. Zachary Phillips on Twitch. So if you guys want to check him out, definitely go ahead and give him a follow on Twitch. He's super funny, super cool. And I always have a blast hanging out in his streams. And he had kind of a different chocolate river flowing through his valley is more of like a matte finish chocolate, you know, obviously inspired by Willy Wonka. And I just love that idea. So I wanted to create one in my own style in my glade. And I kind of did mine with more of like a glossy finish. So it would look kind of like a dark, like a liquid, dark chocolate, like flowing through. 
And this was actually the perfect solution for me because I could not find a transition between the candy house and Ursula's lair to save my life. And look, it's really cool. You can actually like walk on the chocolate river. And if you have the little crocodiles as your pet, their feet actually like sink down into the touch of magic rugs, which makes it look even more like they're standing in liquid chocolate. Super cool. So that's another one of my favorite things about this biome for sure. You got a cozy little picnic area over here by the chocolate river. And then over here, of course, we have Ursula's lair, which has her like evil, you know, whatever, cauldron, her like witch's brew cauldron. Here's the contract where she makes people sign trickery for her so she can like trick them into, into some like horrible deal. And then here's where she makes her potions. Oh, also, you can actually access like the backside of Ursula's potion market. So here, like the other side is kind of like her legitimate business. And then over here is where you do like the black market deals. Ooh, a moonstone chest. There is also a full tour of this biome already up on my YouTube, so I'm not going to spend like too much time going into a ton of detail and walking really slowly because if you want to go check out that video, it's a much more like scenic tour, walkthrough, you know, a slow walkthrough with like the music and everything. So definitely check that out if you would like. But otherwise, this gives you an opportunity to just kind of like walk along with me while I describe, you know, my thought process behind the different builds and stuff that I did. As you exit the little like food kind of like courtyard area, picnic courtyard area, you come over here. There's also some like fishing, fishing spots over there. And then of course you have Goofy's food stall again, right here. And then right here through the middle, we have Mother Gothel's area. This is where she looks up all of her evil recipes for her potions. And then of course we have lots of mirrors placed around because we know she likes to look at herself when she thinks she's like so beautiful and perfect and young. And she's actually a horrible old hag. And then you have a nice little painting station right here. I actually don't know why this is here because I don't feel like Rapunzel would ever hang out here. Like this is, yeah, she's definitely not feeling Mother Gothel, but you know, it's cool. It works. Up next is the Sunlit Plateau. I love having Nala's Waterfall right here at the entrance when you walk in. It just adds such a nice glow to this biome. And you turn over this way and you've got like a little market that's kind of more natural. It's got like a jungly vibe going on. You can get like different goods, fresh flowers over here. This is kind of like where I imagine like a little merchant would sit early in the mornings and kind of set. It's kind of like a farmer's market where you can have like fresh flowers, fresh crops, things like that. And it's right over here by Mirabelle's house which I think is really cool because it kind of seems like maybe like a family business where all different like people from the family come and um, sit at like different areas in the market. Here you have like your fruit and vegetable stall and some fresh apples, tomatoes. Once you get past the market, you get over here into Mirabelle's patio, which is one of my favorite builds. This rug is actually inspired by Dreamlight Decorista, which I'll put a link down in the description for you guys to definitely check her out. You've got like a little crafting station right here. And then this like lounge furniture that you can just enjoy when you're out here, maybe having like some tropical drinks or maybe just as like a break once you've been walking around the market too long and your feet are kind of tired. Walking along this way, you have a side entrance to the cozy pool area on the other side of Mirabelle's house. And then next to the pool, you go into Buzz's campsite. So you have Buzz's RV, and then you've got like a little picnic table, little picnic blanket, and then of course this little cooking station right here in the middle. And then right back here, we have our cozy little oasis that we got from Simba's Quest. For now, this is its home. Its home is in the Sunlit Plateau. Come over this way and you've got like a small little like bath area right by the campsite, which kind of makes sense, right? Because if you're out camping, it might get a little funky, you might need to take a little break and take like a little bath out here. So you got some like little soap basket, little robe, and then of course a little like relaxing lounge area where maybe you want to like change or put on your lotion or something like that. Coming over this way, we get over by Stitch's house and he's got a nice little lounge area right, right by the waterfall. He's got a little like play tent outside because we know Stitch likes to kind of be, he likes his mischief. He likes to play games. So here we have a little playhouse for him where he can kind of hang out. And then back here, we have another bath area for when he needs to wash all the sand off of his feet after he's been surfing. So this is Stitch's kind of like side yard. And then he's got also some flowers and kind of like a front porch area over here 
with his collection of surfboards and then another relaxing lounge area over by the waterfall. Wally's yard and Stitch's yard are kind of divided by the waterfall. So like they have a little bit of privacy, you know, between their houses, but they're still, they're still very neighborly with each other, still very friendly. Um, and then you come over this way and you've got Wally's little corner. Wally is one of the earlier builds I did as well. I actually had no idea. A lot of people don't like Wally's truck. They feel like it's an eyesore and it doesn't go with like the valley aesthetic. It doesn't match anything. Once I put it in the Sunlit Plateau, I feel like everything just kind of came together. We got this little shelf piece that was part of, I think, the Art Deco collection from the Premium Shop. And so I placed that behind the table to kind of make it look like this is like Wally's little repair shop where he kind of like works on old electronics like this little TV. And then we've got our little shelf back there, which is really kind of more, it's really more of like an indoor decoration, I guess you could say. But I wanted to use it to kind of symbolize all of the trinkets that he collected inside of his, his house. Like he had all these little like trinkets and drawers and stuff and bins with things that he collected. He's kind of like Ariel and the fact that he likes to collect a lot of little things. So I thought that that shelf was a really good addition for him. He loves to garden. So you have your little like gardening seeds, flowers, little pottery area over here where he can like pot his plants and then the Wally sink. So he can kind of like rinse off all the excess dirt and do all of his gardening projects in this area. We also have this cozy little lounge area over here, which is kind of like central to the Sunlit Plateau biome so that you can sit on these couches and kind of like see the water from pretty much any angle. Like whichever couch you're sitting in, you can either get a nice view of the river or you can get a nice view of the pond or just any of like the natural greenery and plants around here. Like that's kind of why I wanted to put this in the center rather than like tucked off into the corner somewhere. That way, no matter where you're sitting, you can kind of get like a really good view of the biome. Over here we have Mirabelle's grand entrance to her beautiful home and then coming over this way we've got a little picnic area over by the fishing hole and then crossing over the bridge to the river we have this pillar design which was actually inspired by El Serene who's also on YouTube. And then I just kind of made this area into like a little cooking station so you can come over here and kind of like make your meals and relax in this chair and it's almost kind of like a mini campsite over by the pillar and i believe that same video is where i got the inspo to place goofy stall over here by the waterfall because it's such a gorgeous view so i put the goofy stall here and i also put the my crafting station over here with a little storage chest because i mean what better place to stop by every day to your convenient crafting and your quick storage drops other than by this just gorgeous waterfall this is probably one of the nicest waterfalls in the game sometimes i actually like to just like sit and relax and enjoy the view like you can sit here you can sit on the little orange sofa back there but either way like this view 
is just absolutely phenomenal. Especially at this time in the evening. And with Goofy sliding across the screen and blocking my view of the waterfall. Coming over this way, we have Simba and Nala's little corner. And this cozy little entrance with the fences and the torches was actually inspired by Bestial on Instagram. Previously, it was kind of more of a natural entrance with just like the bushes and some like ferns and trees and stuff. And I like the way the adding the little fencing in the front with the torches kind of makes it look more like an official entrance. Like you're entering, you know, the actual like property line of their house where they live. So I thought that made it cozier. And then I also upgraded the pool. Like previously I had the small, I think like watering hole in this area from the Lion King collection. I added a nice cozy little eating area over here where they can collect their fish and just kind of like chow down. And then you have this nice little waterfall back here, which just kind of adds to the backdrop of their cozy little home in the Sunlit Plateau. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Forgotten Lands, which was also kind of one of the harder biomes to decorate, in my opinion, just because of kind of the way the lighting changes when you pan over into this biome. But I also really like how it looks when there's just a subtle glow from all the different lamps and houses in the evening lighting. So over here we have Fairy Godmother's house. And there is a speed build of this on my TikTok if you are interested in how I put this together. And I kind of like this build because it doesn't take up too much space. It feels like it belongs in the Forgotten, but at the same time it still has kind of a magical glow of Fairy Godmother going on about it. Over here we have our spooky little graveyard area where there is a dig hole coming up. I might leave that there. Looks kind of cool. It looks like something's like coming up out of the grave. That's sick. Okay, I was gonna dig up that hole, but I think I'm just gonna leave it. I don't know. It'll probably bother me later and then I'll remove it. But for now, <laughs> for now, I'm actually just gonna leave it. I think it looks kind of cool. So when you come around this way, you actually have a nice view of the Hollywood Tower. And I put this resort style pool over here. This is supposed to be basically like a haunted carnival and resort area in the Forgotten Lands. And so you've got like nice little seating area right here, but it's also kind of next to a pool that has like a green hue to it. So it's a little bit, it's like a nice pool, but it's also kind of like questionable. It's a little bit creepy. Like, do you actually want to get into the pool or is it like radioactive? Like what's going on here? So that's kind of the idea behind the touch of magic pool we got back here. Once you leave this area, it starts to kind of transition from the resort style in the palm trees over to the more whimsical Alice in Wonderland type feel. And I moved Scar's cave over here, which I think not only does it really fit in Forgotten in my opinion, but it also gave me an opportunity to do something more fun with the Sunlit Plateau area where his cave used to be. Like I wouldn't have been able to fit Simba and Nala's house over there if I had left Scar's cave. So this gave me like a perfect opportunity to place his cave here and then have the Alice in Wonderland tea party right next to it. So as we walk along this way, we have a little tangled picnic blanket over here. There's no real rhyme or reason to having this blanket here. I just kind of did that because this is supposed to be kind of a cozy campsite back here. It's like where you can relax and tell spooky stories. This was originally kind of more of like a Halloween build, but since it's in Forgotten, I think I'm just going to kind of leave it here year round. I love that you can sit on these logs because this to me is kind of like the ideal spot to sit and like maybe roast marshmallows on the campfire tell spooky stories in the fall and then you have all these like creepy carnival rides over here so with the carnival rides i actually just put them here because i didn't have anywhere else to put them like when we first got the carnival rides from the disney park star path Everyone else had like fully built theme parks in like the plaza and in the beach and I saw so many really cool ideas but my valley was almost fully decorated by then. Like the only two biomes I hadn't finished were Forgotten and the Glade. And I didn't want to put the rides in the Glade so I thought, you know what? I'm just going to put the rides in the Forgotten Lands and it's going to be a spooky carnival. So here you have it. So this is kind of I guess you could say like the waiting area where you can like chill and listen to music while you wait in line for the rides. Or maybe like while you wait for your family members who are on the ride, you sit over here and hang out. And as you come over this way, you pass the teacup ride. And then you also get this beautiful grand arch of the balloons that we got when they launched the showcase. And your entrance to the pumpkin patch, which is actually one of my favorite parts of this whole build. 
I didn't really know what to do with this area of Forgotten until we got the Dark Castle. Like, when I saw the Dark Castle, I put it in Forgotten, but I still kind of didn't know what to do with it. It was really the pumpkin patch that kind of brought it all together for me. Like, I knew that it was a great way to kind of transition into the garden in front of the Dark Castle, because I wanted the castle to still look kind of grand and regal, but not like too nice. So like I added the thorns in there. And I also like how the green lights kind of give a nice backdrop to the thorns. So you can really see how they stand out as you're standing off in the distance. Like especially if you're kind of far away, the thorns almost have like a really cool silhouette look like with the lights glowing behind them. Another thing that kind of helped put the finishing touches on this build for me was our Nightmare Before Christmas Dream Snap. Because prior to that dream snap, it really was just the dark castle across from the resort. And then you kind of had uh, the pumpkin patch and this like haunted fencing kind of like separating the two buildings. But when we got the nightmare before Christmas dream snap, I added all the Christmas stuff into this area just for the picture. And I don't even think I had the candy buckets. I added those for the nightmare before Christmas, like Halloween dream snap that we did. And then after the dream snap, I just liked it so much that I left everything. I left the fountain there. I left the Christmas trees there. I think I'm just going to leave it there like year round. While we're here, I'll actually just show you guys real quick. I'm going to do another video of all of my indoor builds because I, it's just too much to fit all into one video. The full valley tour is already long enough without me including all the indoor builds. But since we're at the haunted castle, I want to at least show you my potion shop so you can get a hint, get an idea kind of, of like what's inside here and what's to come um, when I do finally end up uploading all of my indoor builds. But for now, this is just kind of like a sneak peek of what you can get once you come in here. You've got like a little cooking station, um, you know, some little like potion shelves, and then you have your like your little like professional witch and wizards um, here inside the castle. So if you enjoyed this video, please remember to like and subscribe so you can stay tuned for more of that. That concludes our full valley tour. Thank you so much for your patience, everyone who's been asking forever and ever for a full valley tour. But if you would like to see more of my valley and definitely if you want to see my Eternity Isle, then come and hang out with us on Twitch for sure. And we also have a Discord, which you're welcome to join, where we chat about the game. Lots of us friends like to get together off stream and hang out in the Discord. We share our dream snaps in there. We get dream snaps advice and feedback, all kinds of tips and tricks about the game. And it's just a great place to hang out and share your love of Dreamlight Valley with the rest of the community. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tour. And I hope to see you next time. Bye!